Good morning and welcome to our virtual worship service. Just to remind you, this service is pre-recorded. It is not a live stream. And we use some video from choir performances in the past where the choir are vested and they're not wearing masks. Currently, no one is allowed in the church building unless they're wearing a mask. And we proudly wear our masks as an act of love to protect others as well as ourselves. There are no services in the church, but we'll be continuing our virtual worship every Sunday. Please don't forget uh, to check out the announcements that are sent out from the office on Thursdays. Uh, there's one about reprinting the church directory in the near future. So if you have a chance um, and if you have any changes in information or a new picture to include, please send those to Arlene. And also, there will be a Coffee with Father Glenn Zoom meeting this week. It's at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. We want to thank you for your faithfulness and continuing to financially support the church and its ministries during this time when we're not physically together. On behalf of the wardens and the vestry and myself, thank you for your generosity. And as always, if you need to reach us this week, simply call the church number and leave a message or you can send an email. Make sure to check our website for updated information and our Facebook page for encouraging words each day. We hope you'll feel free to follow along with the liturgy at home. Say the responses, say an amen every now and again if you want to. Sing the hymns and include your prayers and intercessions along with ours. And as our bishop routinely is reminding us, the church is open although the building is closed. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you and also with you let us pray O God the protector of all who trust in you without whom nothing is strong nothing is holy increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to come in or go out. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered, or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long rich life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today, we will say together, Psalm 119. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant. I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Study my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. The New Testament reading is from a letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, 
nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. 
It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in, ser in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that is thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. What another great collect this morning. With you, God, as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Amen, Bishop Cranmer. Amen. The eternal things we're praying about this morning are like treasures that are hidden in plain sight, aren't they? Let me be a little more specific. You are treasure. The stories of when you have encountered God in your life, a sparrow on a fence post as you play the eye, his eye is on the sparrow, on the piano at that meeting. You are the treasure. A 20-year-old who lived with terminal cancer since he was eight, writing a poem comparing his death to a bolt of lightning streaking across a dark Nebraska sky, going from one dimension to another. You are treasure. A couple story of how they met each other in a most un unexpected and peculiar circumstance, and it led to a life of falling in love with one another over and over again. There was also that story about a couple that shared a horrendous traffic accident. It was awful. It would haunt their dreams for years. But in that accident, neither one of them was even scratched. You see, you are the treasure. These are people you and I know and walk around with all the time. And when we get to know each other so that we can trust one another, we can risk to share what we consider a theophany, an experience of the presence of God, presence of God with our friend. To see if they can see it as a revelation of God's grace as well. You see, the treasures are there, there in plain sight. I was really captivated this past week by an article that was written by Dr. Michael Chen. I'm curious to know if it's going to strike a chord with you as well. Dr. Chen talks about the enormous number of crises going on around us in this world. And he concludes, I think I can say without risk of overstatement, that 2020 has been a meat grinder. Is there any gift to find in this hellscape? Wow, those are strong words, aren't they? And as he goes on to talk about the scriptures that we read today, he points out that in each of these scriptures, 
God is a gift giver. He goes on to say, it can be strange to read about gifts while living in an age of wrath, like the one we are currently experiencing. All of creation writhes and groans under the crushing intergenerational weight of human sin, neglect, and indifference. This is what judgment feels like. This is what the day of the Lord sounds like when the roar of the lion can no longer be muffled by the din of denial. This is what happens when we neglect, as Solomon so clearly did, the gifts of wisdom that we have been given. This is what it feels like for the sins of our ancestors to be visited upon the children in the third and fourth generation. We are reaping a harvest of our own planting. But in this field of sorrows, God's kingdom is present and awaiting full discovery. <laughs> I was just blown away when he wrote that. I thought that is just magnificent. And our gospel reading today tells of the discovery of a treasure hidden in a field. And it doesn't say it was Josh Gates that discovered it. <laughs> you and I can discover the treasure. You and I can be the leaven in the lump of dough. We can discover the pearl of great price, the pearl of great price, the kingdom of God in the midst of our current world. Because, my friends, our story and we are the treasure too. I want you to stop and think about the Pearl of Great Price illustration for just a moment. Now tell me, what merchant of pearls would sell all that he has, obviously selling all of his uh, merchandise of pearls, to buy just one pearl, which he'll never sell? I can't, he would certainly do himself out of business as a pearl merchant, wouldn't he? <laughs> I can't help but think of the 12 apostles of Jesus who left all that they had, their occupations, their families, their financial resources, to follow Jesus into the reign of God. You see, discovering the reign of God not only costs us something, it costs us everything. We give up our time, our money, our identities, our lives to be a part of what God is doing in the world as we become ambassadors for Christ and not simply sideline observers. As Dr. Chen was pointing out, we become participants in the incoming reign of God in this crazy world of ours. So where is this pearl of great price, this treasure of the kingdom of God? Well, it can be found right under our noses, can't it? There's a story of a man who was talking with a friend about cleaning out his attic. He'd inherited his home from his parents, a house that had been home to his ancestors for generations. And he said, I wanted to clear out the attic for other storage, and I found this old Bible. I couldn't read it. It was in another language. And so I sold it. His friend asked how much he got for it, to which the man replied, I didn't bring much money. It wasn't in very good shape because some idiot named Luther had scribbled all over it in German. A treasure hidden in plain sight. So I have a question for all of us today. What is our greatest treasure? Jesus told his followers that where their treasure is, that is where their heart is going to be also. So if you can't figure out what your greatest treasure is, just follow your heart. I dare say that many of us would say our greatest treasure is not a thing at all, is it? It's not a bank account or a house or what people would normally associate with the word treasure. For so many, the greatest treasure is found in relationships with those we love. Our greatest treasures are in the stories of our lives. Our greatest treasures are those things that we carry in our hearts like Mary did with the stories about her son, Jesus. 
and as that amazing Bishop Cranmer prays in the collect this morning, with God as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. For some of us, our treasure may seem insignificant in the larger movements of the world. Yet even this smallest of seed, this tiny seed, may grow into something unexpected that touches more lives than we had ever thought was possible. How many people has your life and your story touched? There's just no way to figure it out. Your life could have touched people whom you never even noticed were there. Consider, if you will, that faithful Sunday in Cape Town, South Africa, when Bishop Desmond Tutu, this little man of about 5'3 or 5'4, was preaching to a congregation while hundreds of police gathered outside the cathedral, intending to make a show of force and intimidate Bishop Tutu and the members of his cathedral congregation. And as Tutu preached, the police entered the cathedral, brandishing their guns and their billy clubs, and they lined the walls of the church. Tutu continued to preach about the evils of apartheid, of racism, and white superiority over blacks. And at one point, he addressed the police directly. He said, you are powerful. You're very powerful, but you are not God's. And I serve a God who cannot be mocked. So since you have already lost, since you've already lost, I invite you today to come and join the winning side. <laughs> and when he preached this, the congregation erupted in dance and song. And the police didn't know what to do. <laughs> Their attempts at intimidation had utterly and hopelessly failed. It would be just a matter of time before apartheid would fail as well. Treasures hidden right in front of us, right under our very own noses, to see the kingdom of God in the midst of the world in which we live. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Please join in reciting the uh, Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you.
please feel free to join your own prayers with those of the people. Loving Father, light of our minds and souls, we thank you for sending Jesus to live among us, to make the way of the cross the way of life. And we praise you for sending the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, comfort us, and guide us into all truth. Holy Trinity, one God, let our praises come to you for your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O God. We pray for your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, that you would guard its unity and preserve it in peace, especially in areas where your church suffers violence because they bear the name of Christ. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Didi, our bishop, for Glenn, our priest, and for all lay ministers of Trinity Memorial Parish, that you would inspire and lead us all for your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O oh God. For our people of our world and of our nation, that you would instill in all people the desire for peace and mutual respect, that you would enlighten us to appreciate and care for this earth, our island home. For your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O oh God. We pray for those who struggle in poverty, for those who endure chronic pain, for those who suffer from addictions in its many forms. We pray for those who live in fear of abuse. And we pray for those who are ill, especially Dorothy, Paul and Jill May, Christina, Drew, Kathy, for Danielle, Brenda, Nelson, Jacqueline. We pray for Karen, Linda, Ida, Anusha, Rudy, for Linda, Bill, John, Don, Ralph, for Nancy, Christine, Nancy, Suzanne, Patricia, Martha, Joe, Larry, Betsy, Robert, for Andrew and Mary, Virginia, and for Joe. Are there others? We pray that they may know your healing power and peace for your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O oh God. We thank you for the lives of those celebrating birthdays, Rick and Nancy, and for the relationships of those celebrating anniversaries, Dan and Jenny. Are there others? For your love and goodness, we give thanks to you, O oh God. For the communion of saints who have gone before us, especially Virginia. Are there others? Let us hear their voice of encouragement as we run the race of faith that is set before us. For your love and goodness, we give thanks to you, O oh God. Accept our prayers, O oh Lord as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 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 The almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins through repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and the consolation of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Shields me 
be with you and also, and also with, with you. you let us pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we do not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your promise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you, we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray for you to so guide us and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, in you we live and move and have our being. We pray today for those in our world who have been impacted by the COVID-19 virus. We pray that you would surround the sick with a sense of your presence. We pray that you would give strength and peace to those who struggle mentally or financially. We pray for those who treat individuals infected with COVID-19, that you would keep them safe from contracting the virus themselves. And finally, we ask for the scientists, the researchers developing treatments, that you would give them wisdom in their task and that their efforts would be productive. All this we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Wake me up, Lord, so that the evil of racism finds no home within me. Keep watch over my heart, Lord, and remove from me any barriers to your grace that may oppress and offend my brothers and sisters. Fill my spirit, Lord, so that I may give services of justice and peace. Clear my mind, Lord, and use it for your glory. And finally remind us, Lord, that you said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of this earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And would you please join with me as we say together the general thanksgiving. Accept, O Lord, 
our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created all things, and in love you have fashioned the human family in a variety of races, languages, and cultures. Do not let our diversity divide us, but help us to welcome gifts we can give and receive from one another. Save us from prejudice, arrogance, and fear, and teach us how to live together as members of one family, sharing one home, and the children of one God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. And my friends, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.